Hey church, we're so glad that you decided to tune in with us on this Easter Sunday. Come on, wherever you're at, let's get excited and let's celebrate our risen Savior together. Come on. Oh, we worship you, Jesus.
Jesus, we turn our eyes to you this morning. Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we celebrate today that you've risen. Lord, that you've conquered death, hell, and the grave. So Jesus, we lift up your name today. The name above every name. is it
Lord, we celebrate you, Jesus. Because yeah. death couldn't hold you. No, death couldn't hold you. And don't no praise the of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore, for endless days. We will sing Your praise, oh Lord, oh Lord our God. So Jesus, this morning we celebrate God, we thank you that you sent your son to come and die for us on the cross. But God, that's not where it ended. Or three days later, you rose from the grave. And God, with you raising, God, you gave us the victory. And so Jesus, this morning, we stand in that victory. God, we claim that victory for ourselves, for our lives, for our families, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Lord, we lift up no other name but the name of Jesus. Come on in your homes this morning. Right now, would you just lift up your voices? Come on, he's worthy of our praise today. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus. There's nothing like it. so much for worshiping with us this morning and again we want to wish you a happy Easter we wish you were here in the building with us there's nothing like worshiping with God's people but we're so excited too that you also get to tune in online so thanks again for joining us uh, coming up next we have a couple of announcements that, and then uh, pastor's going to bring a powerful message so why don't you stay tuned in and check out what's coming up at LFC Happy Easter and welcome to church online. We are so glad that you decided to tune in with us on this special day. We're bummed that we can't meet together right now, but we love watching God move in new and exciting ways through this season. We want to make sure that you're staying plugged in. So here are a few things coming up that will help keep you connected. If you're in grades 6 through 12, make sure you're tuning in to our LFC Youth Facebook page tonight at 6 p.m. We'll have a fun game to play together, and I'll be speaking a message called The Return. Don't miss out. I want to see you there. Ladies, tomorrow night at 7 p.m., join us for Women's Small Group through Zoom. This is for women of all ages. Head over to our LFC Women's Facebook page and click the Zoom link posted. We can't wait to see you. Tuesday at 7 p.m., Pastors Daryl and Lori are going live on our Alima First Church Facebook page for a time of prayer. These nights have been incredibly powerful. We hope that you will join us. If you want to learn more about God's Word and grow deeper in your relationship with Him, join us on Wednesday night for Growth Track Online at 7 p.m. through Zoom. The meeting link will be posted on our Facebook page. Thursday at 7 p.m., our worship pastors Lucas and Lily will be going live on Facebook to lead us in worship. God has been doing incredible things through our online worship nights. When you begin to lift up your voice and praise the name of Jesus in your homes, the whole atmosphere changes. God is moving and we can't wait to see what he does next. On Friday at 8 p.m., Pastor Lynette is going live on Facebook for family devotions. Don't miss it. Men, this Saturday at 9 a.m., Pastor Daryl is going live on Facebook for Men's Breakfast. Spread the word and make sure to tune in with us. Again, thanks so much for tuning in with us. There's a lot to keep up with, so be sure to follow us on our social media platforms or call the church with any questions. We celebrate Easter because 2,000 years ago, 
God gave His absolute very best for us by sending His Son Jesus to die on the cross. He so loved that He gave. It is His nature to give to His children. So today, in honor of Christ's sacrifice, in honor of God's giving His very best to us, we give our very best to Him in our tithes and offerings. John 3.16 says, I bet you can say it with me. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The beautiful thing is that Jesus is not dead. Yes, He was crucified, died, and buried, but on that third day, Resurrection Sunday, He rose from the grave. He is alive in heaven to receive our offering today and pour out a blessing on our lives. You can give a few different ways at LFC. You can give through our Church Center app or online. You can send your gift directly to the church or drop it off today from 1030 to 1230 during drive through prayer. Let's pray. Lord, today we honor you and your gift to us. Jesus, we thank you for your sacrifice on the cross for our sins and in faith, we bring forth our very best for you. We believe that according to your word, when we give, you will pour out a blessing in our lives. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning, LFC. It is so good to be with you here this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. I know it looks a little bit different, but you know what? We still serve the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is our continued prayer that not only as we are here and we are worshiping the Lord as a staff and the presence of the Lord comes here in this building, but also that He comes right through your internet connection, right into your homes. That's our prayer, that you can sense the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit right where you are seated. You know, um, it's been said and kind of guesstimated that on Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday, the average church, their attendance doubles of what they, they normally run. But can I tell you, since the very beginning of this pandemic, did you know that Lima First has been able to reach over 30,000 people with the gospel of Jesus Christ? Our reach is going far beyond what we can ever even imagine. So be encouraged, friends. Not only are you being ministered to, but thousands and thousands of people all around the place are being touched by the power of Jesus Christ as well. Well, let's get into this today as we study and we break down God's Word in relation to Easter Sunday. If you'd just very quickly grab your copy of God's Word, and I'd love for you to turn to Matthew chapter 28, and I am going to read 10 verses right here. I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation So go ahead real quick, grab that, or pull it up on your phones. But I want us to get an idea of what happened that early Sunday morning. It's Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 10. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord had come down from heaven and rolled aside the stone, and he was sitting on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The Bible says in verse 4 that the guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women, don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus who is crucified, and here it is. But he isn't here. He's not here. He is risen 
from the dead, just as he said it would happen. Come and see where his body was lying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples that he has been risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee and you are going to see him there. Remember what I have told you. And the Bible says in verse 8, the women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. Can you even imagine it? They were filled with great joy, and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message that was given them. And as they went, Jesus met them, and he greeted them. And they ran to him, and they, they grabbed a hold of his feet, and they, they worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, don't be afraid. Now go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. What an absolutely incredible day. You've ever had any bad days in your life? Of course you have. But have you ever had just the best day? We often say that, man, this is the best day ever. Can I tell you, that day was the best day day that they ever, ever had. They went to the tomb expecting to anoint Jesus' body because he was dead. But what they got, they got a risen Savior that conquered death, hell, and the grave. That was the best day ever. You know, as we have been walking through this Passion Week and we've been thinking, I don't know about you, but we've been meditating on the power of the cross and the significance of his beating and the stripes that he bore on his back for you and me. Focused on the power of the cross that he died upon and he gave up his last breath and he declared, it is finished. He didn't declare it is finished just because he was spent. He declared it is finished because the power of sin that was upon him, it is done. The work has been done. It is finished. But today is the day that we celebrate not the, the beating, not even necessarily the old rugged cross, but this is a day that we celebrate the empty tomb. And that's what I want to break down for you and talk with you about today is the significance of the empty tomb. Number one is this. Without the empty tomb, there's not going to be any life. Do you know that? Without the empty tomb, there will be no life. John chapter 10, verse 10 tells us this, the thief only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And Jesus said this, but I have come that they may have life and they have it uh, and live it to the full. In other words, you and I can live a full life in this incredibly dark and empty world. Do you know that? Because the tomb is empty. You and I can have life. Jesus died and rose again so that you and I can have life and live it to the full. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12 tells us this, and this is the testimony. God has given you and I eternal life, and this life is in His Son, Jesus Christ. Whoever has the Son has life. But whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. You see, there's a significance of the empty tomb. And it's Him, Jesus Christ, because He lives, you and I can have life and we can live it to the full. John chapter 11, verse 25 and 26 tells us this. Jesus is saying this, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, he is going to live. There's the life factor. The one who believes in me will have life, even though they may die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. 
Do you believe this? That's Jesus' question to us today. Do you believe that I was raised from the dead? Yes. Yes, we do. Yes, I do. And I hope you believe the same thing. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, it says this, But God is so rich in His mercy, and He loves us so much, that even though we were dead because of our sins, He, speaking of Jesus, He gave us life when Christ was risen from the dead. For it is only by God's grace that you and I can be saved. You see the significance of the empty tomb. Because the tomb is empty, you and I can have life. I love Romans chapter 8 verse 11. And we're going to keep hitting this this verse right here through the remainder of of the sermon. Is this, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, it lives in you. It dwells in you. He is in you and me who believes that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see, the significance of the empty tomb. Without the empty tomb, there would be no life. But the tomb is empty. He's, He's no longer here. He's been risen from the dead. And because of that, because He conquered death, you and I can have eternal life. Can I get an amen right in your houses today? The significance of the empty tomb. Number two, without the empty tomb, there there wouldn't even be any freedom. Look at this. In John chapter 20, verses 5 through 7, it says this. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter, remember, they're, they're investigating this tomb. Remember, John ran on ahead. It was like a, a race to the tomb to see if, if what Mary Magdalene had just told them was, was really true. Could it possibly be? So they ran in. They looked in and they saw the linen wrappings that they had wrapped his body, that they had buried him in. It was lying there. Simon P- Peter arrived and he went inside the tomb and he also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folding up and lying apart from the other wrappings. You see, guys, grave clothes always signified death and bondage. Do you remember the story of Lazarus? Lazarus died And Jesus went to go visit his friends, and everyone was weeping. And the shortest verse in the Bible, it says that Jesus wept. And he said, take me to where he is buried. And once he got up to the edge of that tomb, and everyone was standing there, he said, roll away the stone. And they said, oh, no, Jesus, it stinks. It's going to stink. He's he's been there for, for, for several days. And Jesus said, roll the stone away. Open that up. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And if you remember the story, Lazarus came out of that tomb. And the very last thing that Jesus said was, unwrap him from his grave clothes. Right? You see the significance of the empty tomb is that we will have freedom. That's why those grave clothes, they were already off Jesus. That's why they were cast to the side. Because the grave could not hold him down. And because he conquered death, hell, and the grave, you and I can have freedom. You and I can be free from the bondages of this world. We can be free from the power of addiction. We can be free from the power of depression. We can be free from the power of sin in our lives. Why? Because Jesus rose from the dead. He rose from the dead. I love John chapter 8, verse 36. It says this, that if the Son sets you free, that you're going to be free indeed. In other words, it's a done deal. 
It's a done deal. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That's the significance of the empty tomb is that you and I can have freedom this very day, this very moment, no matter where you are, no matter where you're watching this from, no matter if you're on the other side of the world and you're watching this, know this, that Jesus Christ died for you and me, but he didn't just die for you and me. He rose from the dead for you as well. Wow. I love Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. It says this, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. If you don't know, grab someone and and pinch, right? we're, We're made of flesh and blood. It says this, the son also became flesh and blood for only as a human being could die could, could he died, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil. You see right there? He broke the power of the devil who had all the power of death. Only in this way, and here it is right here, only in this way could he set free all who had their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. You see, when Jesus died on the cross and he was buried in that tomb, He received the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And friends, if he holds the keys, he has the power to unlock you from your prison cell. He has the the, the keys to unlock you from your prison sentence. If you remember a, a short time ago, we talked about the power of freedom and stop dwelling in a place of darkness when God has called you out. You see, let's go back to Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, He dwells. In other words, He lives in you and me. The significance of the empty tomb is this. You can have freedom. Number three, the significance of the empty tomb is this, without the empty tomb, and it's very important that we understand this. You see, God's Word tells us, and I'm going to quote it again here in just a moment, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. If Jesus Christ did not raise from the dead, that means that He could not conquer death. And therefore, since he could not conquer, that would mean that you and I cannot have life. He gave his life that you and I can live a full life in an empty world. 1 John chapter four, uh, 5, verses 4 and 5, we're talking about the significance of the empty tomb. Well, because the tomb is empty, you and I can have victory for every child, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 and 5, for every child of God defeats this evil world. Did you just hear that? For every child of God defeats this evil world. And here it is. And we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Can you tell me what is, what is a victory? Well, it's very simple. A victory is a win. A victory is a win. You see, in earth, we, when we win something, we get a, we get a trophy, right? We get a, we get a trophy, something that we can hold on to, something that we can remember and commemorate that very moment that that happened. I don't know about you, but I used to be a collector of all of my trophies ever since I was a little guy and, and, you know, now that I'm only 25 years old, right? I've still got a shot at that UFC title, right? No, I don't. But listen to this. I, I, I had all of my trophies and in the year 2006, we had, a, we had a house fire. And don't you know, every single one of my trophies that were in 
the old chest that was stored in the box in the garage, every single one of those trophies burned up. From when I was little all the way up, all of them burned up. You see, an earthly trophy will fade away and dissolve into ashes. An earthly trophy, it it signifies a past victory. You get it? That's what a trophy, that's what a trophy case is for. It sits there and it signifies, it signifies a win from yesterday. But the difference between an earthly trophy and an eternal trophy is that an earthly trophy will fade away, it'll burn up, and it's something that is past. But an eternal trophy is something that we are striving towards. And that's what we get with Jesus Christ. When you and I accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and we believe that he was raised from the dead, we don't get a trophy from yesterday. We get a trophy for tomorrow because he doesn't just win right now for you. He wins every single day of your life to bring you on in to heaven with himself. Man, that's good preaching. Can I get an amen right there? (laughs) You see... Because there is an empty tomb, you and I can have victory. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 55 through 57, it says this, Where, O death, is your victory? Where is, where is the victory in death? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. And here it is. But thanks be to God, He, Jesus Christ, gives us victory. He gives us victory through Jesus Christ. That's the significance of the empty tomb, is that because he was raised from the dead, you and I receive a win in our lives when we accept him. In other words, we join, we just got drafted into the winning team. That's what it means for the empty tomb for all of us. We just got drafted into the best team possible. Back to Romans 8 again. Romans 8, the Spirit of God, the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead can dwell in you. That's the victory that you and I have. And because there is a victory in Jesus Christ, there's things that that come upon us. There are are things that, that you and I can hold on to. And I want to give them to you this morning because of the empty tomb. Are you with me? Because the tomb of in, is empty, never again will ask that I can't, for I can do all things through Christ which gives me strength. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess lack, for my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess fear, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and a sound mind. Because the tomb is empty, I never again will I confess doubt and lack of faith, for God has given to every man a measure of faith. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess weakness, for the Lord is the strength of my life. And the people who know their God will display strength and take action. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess supremacy of Satan over my life, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Never again will I confess defeat, for God always leads us into the triumph of Christ. Never again will I confess lack of wisdom, for Christ Jesus has made me wisdom from God. Because the tomb is empty, this is getting good, friends. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess sickness, for by his stripes I am healed. Because the tomb is empty, never I will again will I confess my worries and my frustrations, for I am casting all of my cares upon him who cares for me. Because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess bondage, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is 
freedom. And because the tomb is empty, never again will I confess condemnation, for there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. That's the significance of the empty grave. That's the significance of the empty tomb. And you and I can be a part of God's ultimate plan. But you got to be willing to receive Jesus Christ. There are some of you right now that you have been running from Jesus. You've been running from Jesus for even decades. Someone did you wrong in the church and you've hold, held on to a grudge. I'm here to tell you today, Jesus Christ is speaking right through this place. He's speaking right to your heart right now. And he's telling you, it's time to let those things go. It's time to let bygones be bygones. And since he was raised from the dead, now it's time to put your hurts, your hangups, your habits right into the tomb. And you walk right on out the other side. That's the significance that you and I can have. That's the thing that you and I can have with Jesus Christ. It's just not about the cross. It's also about the empty tomb. You know, he has a plan for your life. And that's so easy just to let roll off your tongue. But I will tell you this, Jesus Christ has a plan, but he's waiting for you to get in the plan. He's waiting for you to make a decision for Him. And that's what I, the opportunity that I want to give to you right now. Maybe you're watching this and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And you want to do that. But you don't even know what that looks like. Or maybe you used to serve Jesus. But life happened. Hurts happened. And you just decided just to do things on your own. But today, you know. You know that you want a fresh start with Him. If you fit into either one of those categories, can we pray this prayer together? Maybe bow your head, close your eyes, and just pray this very simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you right now, and I give you my heart. Please forgive me of all of my sins, and be Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. So now I receive the gift of eternal life that's only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. You see, the Bible tells us this. When yet one person comes from all of heaven, is having a praise party. Woo, woo. All of heaven is having a praise party right now because of the decision that you made. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time or you simply want a fresh start, there's three things that possibly you could do. One, there's the, the office number at the bottom of the screen and also our email address. But there is a link on our website under the About tab, and it's just simply called Connect. Would you let us know that you made a decision for Jesus Christ? We want to help you. We always, we, we say this all the time. If you will let us, we will help you. You see, our mission at this church is very simple. It's to make, deploy, and to multiply, mature and equip Christ followers. We want you to have your best life, <laughs> and no pun intended, but now. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is waiting. He's waiting for you. Maybe you're watching this and you, you've been a believer for a while, but you've, you've kind of lost that spark. You've lost that zeal. 
And I tell you today, don't forget this. And we read it in Romans chapter 8. The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, He dwells in you. He dwells in you. Submit yourself to the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. And the Bible says when you do that, He'll be the one to lift you up. Now I wonder on this Easter Sunday, maybe families are getting together. Maybe they're coming together through video or, or maybe you are, maybe you're taking the risk and joining together for a meal. Can I tell you this? Whatever you do today, don't forget the significance of the empty tomb. Lord, bless your people this day. Let your spirit rest upon them. If they need healing in their bodies, Lord, grant it to them. If they're discouraged, God, give them hope and joy this very day. I ask that you would bless your people, every person that is listening to this. I ask that your spirit would rest upon them. Come right now, tap them on the shoulder, and let them know that you are there, that they are not alone. This may sound odd, but there's someone watching this right now (laughs) that you have thought about just taking your life, the stress of this pandemic, the stress of the, the issues that you're going through, the financial issues are more than you can bear. But I will tell you this, if you will surrender your heart to Jesus Christ right now, there will be such a joy that fills your heart. Don't do, don't end that don't end your life. There is significance not only in the empty tomb, but there's significance in your life. And if you will submit to him, I promise you, I promise you, your life will be different. Call that number again at the bottom of the screen. Let us know how we can pray for you. Connect with us on our website, limafirst.church. And we'll walk you through to a better, better life than you've ever had. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We love you.